just going to start off by just talking about some of the conversations that are happening locally um, around the skills shortage in the sector um, and some of the opportunities that there are for em employers to engage in some of that conversation and then we're all going to talk about the, the different ways that you can get involved. So at a pan Sussex level there is a local skills improvement plan which has mapped out what some of the skills shortages are across a number of sectors um, and has put together a plan around how they, those might be addressed and Dan's going to pick that up a little bit at the end. But I'm just going to talk about from our perspective at the County Council, we've been facilitating something called Skills East Sussex which is an employment and skills board for a number of years now. And that brings together leaders from universities, colleges, uh, training providers and employers to look at what, what are some of the challenges the county faces across a number of different sectors um, and, and what can we do collectively to address some of those issues. And, and it's sort of setting the priorities for the county in terms of thinking about how do we address unemployment, how do we upskill our now uh, our uh, population of people who are in employment. Uh, how do we look at skills um, shortages amongst tutors? Because actually, if you haven't got tutors in colleges delivering, you need, to, you need to be able to get people in to be providing the right sort of skills to our pupils. Um, and how, you know, what does the future look like? What are we telling young people in schools about what the jobs are of the future and what the local economy looks like? So part of that is that we've got a number of sector-based task groups, which again is those employers and educators coming together to really get to the nub of some of those challenges and come up with solutions together. Um, and we've had lots of brilliant uh, projects and activities that have come about as a result of those conversations, and we'd love you to take part in those conversations. So if you're interested, you know, come and talk to us about how you can be part of that. Um, Kim's going to talk to you about one of the projects that came about as a result of the creative and digital task group um, called Talent, Talent Accelerator. And we also have other ways that we, we, we have an apprenticeship group that is really focused on getting that message out to employers around you know, the value that apprenticeships bring and also to young people and job seekers about uh, the apprenticeship route as an alternative to university. We have a number of projects that have come about because of those groups. So I'm just going to talk really briefly about some of those because they are projects that um, businesses can access or you can get involved in, in inspiring the next generation of young people coming through. So we've got a program called Transform, which is um, helping hand-holding businesses through uh, apprenticeships and helping them to identify where their skills gaps are and what skills training they can access and what funding they can access as well to support that. We've got a careers hub which is working with all our secondary schools, special schools and colleges in the county to make sure that teachers and careers leaders in schools really understand what the economy looks like, what the, where the skills shortages are, where the opportunities are, what the future of the workforce looks like as we transition to net zero, as a, you know, we've just had a talk on AI, what, that, what does that look like in terms of what workforce? And that's really important that young people understand that. And part of that careers hub is about engaging with employers and getting them to host groups of young people in their workplaces or host work experience placements so that we can really inspire young people into these industries. We also have uh, a, an SDAR team that works with, uh, we were talking earlier about diversity in the workforce and really thinking about how we reach out to different groups within the population and get them to think about retraining and upskilling and what the opportunities are within this, uh, within this sector in particular. Um, and part of that is about looking at groups like Ukrainians and refugees. We've got a huge amount of talent in this county, how do we reach out to them and make sure that they are aware of all the opportunities. So my email is uh, up there, skillseastsussex uh, at eastsussex.gov.uk or come and talk to us afterwards if you're interested in getting involved in any of that sort of activity and I'm going to pass on to Kim to talk about the Talent Accelerator. Thank you. 
Um, and I'll click you over. Brilliant. So, um, hello, I'm Kim Byford and I lead Talent Accelerator. So, Talent Accelerator is a project that runs across the whole of East Sussex for young people from the age of 5 to 25, looking about how to help them into the creative, cultural, digital sector, which is thriving in this area, but our young people often um, face barriers to getting into it. So one of the things that I really am on top of and I would really like to push and I want to talk to you about today is work experience and how we make it work. I'm talking to a lot of employers who um, balk at the idea of work experience in all its formats. Um, so <laughs> it's really to kind of put a new, fresh perspective on what it can look like and how we at Talent Accelerator can help you with that. So one of the things that's really important to know, it's now a legal requirement for 16 to 19 year olds in level three education to have work experience. And we really need to think about what that means and how meaningful that is. Work experience has changed um, and should have changed from the work experiences that I know I had as a young person and perhaps you did too. Um, for young people, work experience really helps them explore possible career routes. One of the frightening statistics is that a young person's career horizons are set by the time they're six years old. And that means because that's the jobs and the careers that they're surrounded by. So we're limiting people very early if we don't expose them. And work experience is a very good way to show people what is possible. It also shows job roles and industry areas that they may well not be aware of. Many people in this room, I am sure, have to explain to a parent what their job is on a more or less daily basis. I know working in the creative sector, I have to do that. So there are jobs there that people don't even know they exist and work experience helps to expose that. It helps young people see the day-to-day -day reality of a working environment, what it looks like to be in a 21st century job and also helps develop communication skills. So it's an essential part of helping our young people into fulfilling lifelong careers. From an employer's perspective, and this is the one that I'm mostly speaking to in this room, um, it's trying to make work experience work from you, for you. And I think what you, the idea is, and from Talent Accelerator is really looking at, is how to create work experience as part of a talent pipeline. So Caroline was just talking about um, the Local Skills Improvement Plan, which clearly shows this, you know, the digital sector in this area has a distinct lack of diversity. You've got a vast range of opportunities that you often find difficult to fill. And you also have a real need for staff who learn quickly because the industries move quickly. Work experience can be the start of a really good talent pipeline to help you move that forward. So if you're getting a young person on board when they're 16 to 19, and then they're keeping in contact with you whilst they're doing training or they're going off to university, when they come back, they are a really flexible and ready employee for you. There's a lot of common concerns around work experience. Um, young people aren't suitable for the roles that you've got in your company or it takes up too much time. We're really, really busy. I appreciate that. It does. But it's actually investing time now that will come to fruition later. So again, it's thinking again, pushing it around the other way. You need to consider how you focus on the gaps that you've got and how a young person might be able to help you fill those. You look at also, if you don't want to have people in-house, think about projects that you could set that could be done in a college setting, with you popping in to set the project, have a, a mid-check mid -check in point and an end result. Also, you could do a really light touch by getting involved in the Open Doors programme, again, that Caroline was just speaking about, where you simply just open your doors for an hour or so to young people to show them that what happens in your company. But really, really, it's about making sure that you're thinking that work experience is the beginning of a recruitment process that will fill your gaps and make things better for you as a company in the end. There also does come with a commitment for you as employees to think about work experience that's suitable for 21st century. So as I said earlier, it's time for us to rewrite what it looks like. And um, work experience isn't licking envelopes in the corner. That's my personal experience of work experience as a 16 year old. Um, so it's focusing on the skills that your organization needs and making that the beginning of your talent pipeline. I often hear that young people aren't work ready I'm afraid I'm going to say to you for work experience, you have to embrace that reality. Of course they're not work ready. They're 16 to 19 years old. And I don't know if you can remember yourself as a 16 to 19 year old 
we weren't all exceptional and work ready and we need help to become that. So I would ask you to think about that, but also think about that these young people have been through an education system that is outcome driven and deadline driven, much more so than the education system that you will have experienced. So actually perhaps they are more work ready than you were. Um, so lastly, the last plea I have for you is think about work experience not only for young people, but for the people who are leading young people. So for educators, could you offer a work experience to a teacher or college lecturer to show them how the industry is moving forward? Um, again, I often hear from employers, qualifications are really slow, they don't keep up with industry. Of course they don't. They take absolutely ages to write and to be ratified and to get into the school and, and the college systems. But you've got educators there who want to be relevant. They just need to know what's going on. And having them into your, work, you know, your workplace for a day or a couple of days would really, really help to do that. So my contact details are there. Um, and um, it won't be me, but um, James, who's our work experience lead, Will, who's been out, on, um, been out on the table today, will be there in Racket Studios to chat to anybody who wants to talk about work placement. Thank you. I'll pass over to Donna. Thank you, Kim. Uh, afternoon, everyone. Great to be here. Donna Harfield, and I am Vice Principal at East Sussex College. A lot of the themes that, um, that have come up from Caroline and Kim already are things that I'll also kind of stress the importance to you. I've been really encouraged going round the fair today, and actually I've, I've been here since the start, and this morning I've been to a couple of uh, the engineering talk earlier, at about 11 o'clock this morning, um, and it's really encouraging to hear employers talking about the importance of bringing um, new blood into their business and getting people who have or are ready to acquire the skills they need to be impactful and to make a difference. Um, my biggest plea is that we can't do it without you, really. So, and I understand this is an employer kind of audience that we've got today. So if you're an employer that's engaged heavily with skills, great, please keep on going. If you haven't yet and you're curious, there's so many provisions that you can get involved with. I'm going to run you over what we do at the college, just a big and broad kind of um, overview of kind of the types of provisions that formalise that you can work with us on, but there are a host of ways that you can get involved without having to make serious investment, um, and that not, might just be a light touch version, so the sorts of things that Kim alluded to there, actually come do, a, come do a classroom talk, those sorts of things, which actually all they cost you is time. Um, so. At the college, just in case you don't know who we are, East Sussex College, we're your local college, we're just down the road, uh, cross levels way next to the hospital. So, um, so we've got the campus here, but we have five campuses across East Sussex as a region, and we are the largest general uh, further education college in East Sussex. Um, so five campuses across Lewis, um, Eastbourne, Hastings, Ore Valley, and uh, New Haven, I think I got them all. Um, but, um, and lots of outbreak centres as well. We've got a green centre of excellence just around the corner at Hampden Park, but which we're really proud of pioneering. Uh, you know, de it's a decarbonisation centre and how we, how we move technology forward in the future. We are quite forward thinking as a college, um, and obviously we cover every industry. So we are really cross-cutting and we have a whole body of employees who are experts in their field who want to keep engaged with industry and keep their, their expertise and knowledge up to speed by working with you. Um, so, so yeah, and that co cuts across everything. And there's a lot of industries where there's a lot of crossover as well, actually. You know, like I said, I was in the engineering forum earlier and that's, that links to digital because actually they're making parts which obviously feed the digital engines and the beasts and the, <laughs> the way it all works and, um, and as well the creative world and Kim and I have done a lot of work on, on how we build more apprenticeships in creatives in this region. Um, some of the programmes that we do, so things that you probably would have heard of, so um, we, we do your most obvious kind of thing that you think what we, what we would do, we do the full time courses, okay, so that's our core 16 to 19 provision where people can come to us from a school and they do their you know, what would have been a BTEC or an A-level or a full-time programme, they work through that scheme of work and they do that for two years before going on to university. So that's your more conventional course and we do a host of things there around media production, intro to IT, gaming, animation. Um, and all of that really does give people the knowledge, skills and behaviours to go on to their next step, whether that's into employment and apprenticeship or on to further study and higher, higher level uh, university. Um, we also do apprenticeships, 
which I alluded to there. So apprenticeships is a core part of our provision. Um, we have a, um, two standards that you can work with us on, for, like digital support technician as, a, as an example. Um, and we're always looking for employers who want to take on an apprentice in those fields. So if you are interested, then please speak to me. An apprenticeship is a, is a big investment but it's so worthwhile. And what you get is a full-time employee into your business who's working for you and who's a full-time student with us. And on a ratio, although it doesn't always pan out this way, they usually come to college one day a week and they'll be with you four days a week. So that's roughly how an apprenticeship works. You cover them as in, in terms of their salary and all of their, their costs like you would any other staff member. But if you want the most, the most impactful way to get a new person into your business, who's going to be integrated and looking about succession planning, an apprenticeship is the way to do it. Okay, so that sits there as kind of the biggest investment you can make. There's other investments, though, if you're not quite ready for that step. Um, T-levels, you might have heard of T-levels, um, is, is, is almost an apprenticeship in reverse. So think of it in that way. <laughs> so you don't have to employ them formally, but they do have to be on a committed work experience placement with you. Okay, and we do have um, digital production design and development quite a long title, but, um, but it covers a really broad range of topics in that T-level, and we're always looking for companies to take on one of those learners in your business, because you will have on an approximate about 45 days where they'll come in and do a work experience placement, but it will form an essential and mandatory part of their qualification. Okay, um, And then there's other things you can do with us as well around just engaging with us. Like I said, we run a, something called the Employee Exchange. And this is about just the exchange of ideas, the exchange of um, um, your skills and ours and benefiting those in our communities and ultimately trying to help your businesses grow and help you source the workforce of tomorrow by accessing our student base. Okay, so we do all of that. And the types of activity that can take place in that range from checking a scheme of work and just saying, oh, okay, yeah, actually that made sense, but why don't you resequence it like this? Because you probably need to know that before you moved on to that module. So it could be as simple as that. Um, it could be coming and doing classroom talk or even opening the doors at your business so we can bring our students to you to see what it's like in a real um, environment, real, real working environment. Um, so there's a whole host. If you're interested in any of that, please speak to me. We do adult courses as well. So we, do, we really do do big and broad courses for everybody. Everybody has a place at our college. Um, and so adult education is a really strong part of our provision and, and, and a really important part of our community, actually, to enable everybody to have the opportunity to do qualifications. And if we're looking specifically at digital under our adult education offer, there is actually a digital entitlement qualification that we launched last year, which helps everybody get at least a base knowledge of digital skills so that they can, they can successfully manoeuvre online and, and be safe and, you know, and, and make sure that they're, they're, they have a, a base knowledge of moving around. So if you know anybody in your business or, or others that might need that support, please refer them. Um, and we do a, a, a sort of a five-week digital course, which is really in-depth, and it gives you kind of in-depth um, knowledge around web development software, those sorts of things as well. So a whole host of different types of courses. And last but not least, I'm going to men mention our CODES project, which you might have heard of. Um, so CODES was um, a strategic development funding there we go, SDF um, as the acronym. Um, and basically what that did was launch a whole host of training um, that we led on. Um, some of that is was integrated into A-levels and those sorts of programs, and that was around cybersecurity servers. Um, we had modular training happening, software app development, and about the digital building and infrastructure supporting businesses as well. So there's, there was a lot of activity that happened around that too. Um, there was a lot in there, wasn't there? So hopefully I haven't bamboozled you. Um, but if you are interested, then I'm very happy to speak to you. We really want to work with our employers in our community. The college, we, we, we recognise our place as, as a community connector, making sure that we're supporting you on a personal level with your own or your children's or your family's education, whilst also making sure that we're in tune with the business world around us. So please speak to me later if there's anything that we can do to link up and to enable more opportunities through learning. I'm going to hand over. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I recognise a few faces I've spoken to already. Um, so I'm Andrea. I'm from the University of Sussex. I'm sure you all know the university, but just in case you don't, we're one campus site. We're based at Falmer in Brighton um, and we have about 18,000 students 
And my role is based in the careers and entrepreneurship team. I lead on employer engagement and just echoing what's been said, we can't do most of what we do without you in my role. So I really rely on the support of employer partners to help our students and also our recent graduates. So we support those who've left us within the last three years as well. So we rely on your input. So I, today I thought I would just mention a couple of programmes that we're running, one of which is live now, that hopefully will be of interest and will also give you an opportunity to get talent into your organisations, to get fresh thinking, to get the latest academic teaching which our students are going through. Um, we're a very well respected and renowned university, we're known as a research university, so our academics are at the top of their game and those students are getting those experiences. We've got six schools of academic study, and for the purposes of today, our engineering and informatics school may be of particular interest where students are learning computer science, AI, robotics, or the cutting edge. So I'm just going to mention a couple of flagship programs which are hopefully will be of interest and will allow you to sort of get some of our talent into your organisations. So we run some programs which, from our point of view, we fund because we want our students to have the opportunity to take on really good quality work experience that's well paid, that's well structured, that will help them to build their confidence, to develop their skills and to gain experience. So we rely on new employer partners to help provide those opportunities. So the first programme is live at the moment, it's open to you to um, express interest in taking part. It's called our Student Consultancy Programme and it's aimed at our students who are in their final year of their undergraduate degree or they're on a taught postgraduate master's programme. And we will ask you to come up with a live challenge, a question, a short research project that you may like a team of five students from those year groups to take on for you. So we're asking you to come up with a broad question. I'll give you some examples of previous ones that we've done just to give you an idea. So the students are from different academic subject areas. So we do ask that it's, you're looking for kind of general, generalist skills, but we'll all have research skills, analytical skills. And they are working across their team of five to look at your question from their individual viewpoint. So you may have a business school student who's doing a marketing degree, you may have an engineer, you may have a psychologist, and those five students will look at your question and come up with some research and some finding which will then be handed over to you to own and do what you want with. So we've run it for three years. Um, some examples include Brighton and Hove Albion Football Club who were looking to improve their reach in the community about their sustainability initiatives. We had a fairly new startup um, help towards their net zero targets. Um, Brighton Hove City Council were looking at ways that they could improve recycling rates amongst the community. Um, one employer in Eastbourne actually was looking to see how they could improve the demographic of their staff and attract people from a more diverse range. So that's some of the examples. Students spend a combined 100 hours on the project and the commitment from you is really just a little bit of your time. There's no financial commitment. The university pays each student a bursary to take part, so it's inclusive, and it will include those who maybe need to work part-time as well, so it, it's inclusive to all those students. They will ask to meet you at the beginning, so you'll be able to sit down with them and go through the challenge that you've set, contextualise it, answer any questions they may have. You'll meet them midway through, just to see how they're getting on and just see which direction you want them to go in. And at the end, they will make a formal business presentation to you on their findings. All that can be remote, it can be online, or it can be in person. We're local to you, so we really welcome you to come onto campus or for our students to come and visit you at your, at your bases. So that programme is open now. The deadline to apply is the 20th of October. I'm really happy to answer any questions when we move into the Racket Studio about how you might engage with that. We run it twice a year, if it's, so if you need a bit of time, we run it again in the spring. So that's call out number one. And the second call out is that we offer full funding to organisations to recruit our students for six or eight week summer internships. So students are either coming to the end of their second year of study or they're coming to the end of their undergraduate degree. And we will ask you to give us a role, a job description that we will promote to those students. They'll apply to you directly. If you're successful, the university will give you the full funding to then salary that student. 
Our priority students are those who are from underrepresented groups, so including those whose family income is below a certain threshold, maybe our mature students. They're students who are academically bright and achieving the same as their peers, but they're not moving into graduate roles at the same rate. So we're trying to close those progression gaps. So that's the reason why we fund it, but oh, we run it for eight years, and for employers, it's a fantastic way of testing out talent as well. It might be a role that you might want to make into a permanent position moving forward, but absolutely no obligation to do that. So that's two of our call-outs. The second one will be opening in December. All throughout the year, our kind of core offer to you is that if you have a vacancy that you'd like to get in front of a student, a part-time job, an internship, a placement, a graduate job, we offer a free vacancy advertising service, so you can make use of that. We also want to be conduits between you and our academics as well, so you may have a very subject-specific problem that you'd like to solve, and we can talk to you about putting you in touch with academics and research staff who can talk to you about knowledge exchange, about innovations and how you might use the university, how you might set a project for a particular subject area rather than a generalist one. So, yeah, open call out. Please do ask any questions you may have. Um, we've got lots of employers in Eastbourne who've taken students, so our students will travel to Eastbourne, is in the local area, and we're trying to educate them to move outside Brighton as well. So we're really keen on why we've taken part today is to sort of move into, into this area and make sure our students and graduates are seeing your opportunities and coming to work for you. Thank you. Hand over to you. Can I grab the clicker? Oh, you've got slides. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I've always got to be extra. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Dan from Tech Native Digital. Um, first of all, I think just brilliant to hear how much good stuff's going on in, in East Sussex. And I think we're really lucky to have a really proactive local authority and education scene in East Sussex as well. And I, I work um, in another role. Um, Caroline mentioned the um, Local Skills Improvement Plan. I, I've been working with the Sussex Chamber of Commerce for the last two years on uh, leading on the creative and digital side of it, did a lot of research, spoke to a lot of employers um, about skills gaps um, and where things need to change um, across Brighton Hove, East Sussex and West Sussex. And I think it's fair to say East Sussex definitely has the most proactive strategy in terms of creative and digital. Um, and um, I'd encourage employers um, in the room to get in touch with Caroline and, and all the guys here, um, it's absolutely essential to engage with education uh, as businesses to actually both like, engage with young people but also support the institutions that are working really hard to develop their curriculum um, and that engagement with business is absolutely essential and that was one of the um, conclusions that I came to in, um, in, in the research that I did that actually uh, facilitating this, this link between education and business working closer is really, really important. So it's great that this event's happening as well and, and credit to the chalk guys for putting this on of you guys being here because the first stage is that we're here talking about skills and this is really, really important to open up these pathways for, for young people to, um, or anyone actually, to get, to get into the industry. So um, my research actually led me down um, a road where I, I saw look, there's a real need here to do something different um, in, and in, in tech in particular, in digital in particular. And I was really inspired by the many employees that I spoke to about the level of innovation, the, the absolutely brilliant, inspiring career that you can have in tech if you know how to access it. But what I saw... Oh, no, that way. Ah. So, first of all, the positives was that... What I saw was that the tech sectors... Um, in the UK, an absolute massive success story. And um, uh, East Sussex tech and digital sector is really interesting because on the data, it's smaller than the other sectors, although Phil this morning said that it, that didn't reflect it. But what I saw in East Sussex was just a really, really strong community, and I think that's, that's its, its real strength. Um, and nationally, the, the tech sector's grown 10 times in the last decade. It's grown exponentially since the pandemic as well, uh, where everything went online. Um, it is the UK's biggest employing sector, which I didn't realise until I started researching it, well above health and social care, retail, construction and all the others that you might want to think about. Um, there are jobs in, in the sector if you know how to find them. There's a, a growing need for skills. Um, there are 50,000 jobs every month that go unfilled still in the sector, even in this downturn. And employers just aren't finding the, the, the pipeline of talent that they need. There's not enough people coming through the skills sector um, uh, to fill the gaps, which I'll, I'll come on to in a moment. Um, 
Yes, salary is also um, much higher than the rest of the economy, 80% um, higher than the rest of the economy, and growing faster, going higher faster than the rest of the economy. So it's a great sector to work in. Um, but as I said, there's, there's employers are really struggling to, to fill the gaps. Um, you can talk about whether that's at junior, senior, or mid-level is different uh, picture. Um, but also that, that when, when uh, the employees reported that when new entrants come into the workplace, they are having to train them up um, often from scratch regardless of what they've learned because of this time lag between sort of qualifications and, and the sector moving so fast. And, and there's a real challenge there about how do, how do we as education providers keep up with that, that, ch that level of change. Um, that qualifications can come out, come out of date. And also there's a lack of diversity in um, tech workforce and education, which there's some stark figures up there with you know, only 19% of the workforce female, um, only 10% of digital apprentices are female, 8% from an ethnic minority, and um, uh, 77, on the, this was just Sussex data, 77% of um, students on ICT courses were white boys. So you could see the lack of diversity coming from school level and there's a real link into careers advice and what young people are being advised from a young age. And it's about trying to change perceptions of what a tech career can be. Uh, so I'm setting out to do things a little bit differently, do things a little bit outside of this system, which perhaps is, is um, presenting some of the challenges and, and going to employers and saying, look, let's build a tech academy uh, in partnership with employers let's make this agile and responsive, let's make this born out of the industry, um, let's have this taught by industry professionals, um, let's co-create this curriculum, this journey ourselves, and um, we're currently um, engaging with businesses looking for uh, sponsors for our first, uh, our first course, which we want to launch uh, January next year. Um, if they're looking, if employees are looking to recruit uh, juniors onto their team in software development or looking to build this long-term talent pipeline and want to do it in a slightly different way, um, we would really like to speak to you and, and look at how we can do that. So the first course is going to be a 16-week boot camp in software development and we're really reaching out into the community through meetups and all sorts of other things to meet a diverse range of people. We really want there to be a high level of um, you know, female participants on, on, on the course, um, those from uh, different range of backgrounds, socioeconomic or um, neurodiversity, ethnicity, whatever you have it. And we really want to open these doors to more people um, to get into these brilliant careers and help employers to build more diverse teams and have the right skills. Um, my whole background is actually uh, running a 16 to 18 college for young people. And um, so I feel quite passionately about the skill sector and supporting the skill sector. and. Um, I want Technati to be part of that solution as well in terms of um, bringing employers together who want to work with uh, colleges, universities or schools um, to maybe look at co-creating curriculum or um, setting live briefs or going in and giving guest speaks and all this sort of stuff. So if you're interested in engaging in any way in, either, in, in any of these things, um, please, uh, I'll be also in the um, Racket Studios from it's three, three o'clock, um, just outside if you haven't been there. Um, go outside and turn left. So yeah, please come and speak to us all. We'll all be there. Um, it'd be really good to, to see you all there. Oh, we oh, thank you. <laughs>